We are starting chapter 6. Chapter 6, we're dealing with section 1, 6.1. We're talking about atoms and their interactions. We're going to be talking about the chemistry of life. That's the name of the chapter. Um, but before we can go into, like, chemical reactions and all that kind of stuff, which we will go into, we're going to talk a little bit about atoms and how they interact. Inside this section, first thing we're going to talk about, we're going to answer the question, what is an element? Then we are going to look at what are atoms, and then we're going to talk about the three types of chemical bonds, and lastly, we are going to talk about chemical reactions. And in these different sections, there are a number of different things that we're going to talk about. So let's get started. What is an element? What's that thing there to the right? Anybody know what that is? Periodic, periodic table, the periodic chart, and it has a bunch of elements listed in that. Yes, you need to know every one of these elements. You need to know the numbers on top of the elements. And you need to know all of the titles to this. No, I'm just joking. You don't. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible person. You don't need to know all of those things. I'm going to say, we'll save that for when you guys take chemistry. Um, so if you take chemistry, you will go into that. But for now, we're just going to look at a few. But first, what is an element? An element is a substance that cannot be broken down into smaller particles. A substance that cannot be broken down into smaller particles. If I take gold and I break it in two, what do I have? Gold. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you 100% sure? Yeah. Okay, what about if I break it in four? Gold. Silver. It's silver, it's a miracle. <laughs> All right, no matter how much I break it down, I chop it up, I chop it up, I break it into pieces, I pull it apart and all that stuff, I still have gold. All right, gold is an element, and we're going to look at some elements uh, today. Uh, there are 90 elements that naturally occur on Earth, 90. And there, of those 90, there are 25 that are essential for life, essential for all living things. And each element is identified by a symbol, and those are the symbols that you see there in a periodic chart, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it. You don't have to memorize all of them, but there are a few that I do want you to memorize. Okay, are you guys ready to go through the ones that you got to memorize? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Uh, carbon, C, that's an easy one. Calcium, CA, that's another easy one. Uh, they're all easy, right? Sodium, NA. You guys look kind of confused, like, what? Why NA for sodium? Why? Because it's in a different language. It's natrium. Um, it's a, in Dutch is natrium, not sodium. In English is sodium. But Na is the symbol for sodium. What? Yes, it's the N is the capital letter, and the A um, you write that lowercase. What's the what's the symbol for carbon? What about sodium? Ah, <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Na. All right. What about calcium? C A C A. Now some more, some more symbols. Potassium, K, nitrogen, N, and iron, F E. Those are the symbols for those. Let's try that again. Well, we have one more. Gold is A U. Okay. What is sodium? Na. Are you sure? Yeah. No. <laughs> no and yes. Okay. What about Iron, F-E. F -E. What about, uh, 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 hey, don't look. I see you. Uh, calcium, yeah. carbon, C. Uh, nitrogen. Uh, did I miss one? Yeah. Potassium is? K. You need to know these symbols. I will ask you these symbols on the test. The last one, AU is gold. The way I memorize this one, if, you, you know, if it's hard for you to remember, where, where did I go to school? Andrews University. Andrews University. So the way I remember this is Andrews University is as good as gold. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. So if you need a way to remember this, Andrews University, good as gold. You guys are laughing now, but you will never forget that again. Mark my words. And if you do, then something's wrong with you. All right. 
Let's continue. So the elements in the human body. What were the, what was the question in the beginning in the jump start? The top what? Four. Top four. What are the top four elements in the human body? Okay, I heard carbon dioxide, but it's not carbon dioxide, it is carbon. carbon. Remember, when we're talking about elements, it's a substance that cannot be broken down into small particles, smaller particles. Um, carbon dioxide is made up of what? Carbon dioxide is what? Car carbon and oxygen. It's two, two atoms of oxygen and one one of carbon. So if you break that down, you could break carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen. So that's not an element. Carbon would be the element. And we're going to talk about what those are in a little while. So uh, oxygen, then carbon, and then hydrogen, and then nitrogen. Those are the four elements that you find the most of in the human body. Then we have trace elements. What are trace elements? Trace elements are elements that are present, but it's not a lot of it. Okay, they're present in small amounts in the human body. Some examples, N, K, C, A, F, E. Those are a few examples. What is N? <laughs> N is what? Nitrogen. What is K? Potassium. What is C, A? And F, E? Iron. So those are some trace elements that you find in the human body. Um, and these are important because they help control cell metabolism. We're going to talk a little bit about metabolism in this chapter. Um, plants get their trace elements through their roots. When they take up the water with the nutrients, they get those trace elements that way. We get trace elements through the food that we eat. So we need these for cell metabolism. Um, we get them from the food that we eat. Next thing we're going to talk about is what is an atom? What is an atom? An atom is the smallest part of an element that still maintains all of the characteristics of that element. So we started with a block of gold. We broke it in two and we have what? No, we have two blocks of gold. We don't just have one block of gold anymore. We break it down, we get four, we break it down, we get more and more and more and more and more until we come to the smallest particle that we can have. That smallest particle that is still gold is one atom of gold. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now sometimes it's hard to visualize these things because you really can't see it and yeah, you have these pictures on the screen that show, but have, have you guys ever seen one of those things here to the right? No, not really, right? That's not what you see. You see gold, okay? Um, but when you break down, go and that's not an atom of gold, that's just to show what an atom is, but when you break down gold to the smallest particle that you can have, you have one atom of gold. Make sense? The smallest particle that's still gold, all right? The, these are the basic building blocks of all matter. What is matter? Anything that has mass, right? It takes up space, okay? You are matter, and you matter. <laughs> that was such a corny joke. Wow. <laughs> it, was not a, it was actually a little better than my joke. Um, hey, don't be hating on the fun guy joke. That's the classic joke. Anyhow, let's continue. All right, so... Anything that you look at, anything that you see, you look at this table, you look at me, you look at the clothes that I'm wearing, the clothes that you guys are wearing, your hair, that is matter. And if, because it's matter, if I take it and I break it down, let me break it down. <laughs> this is for demonstration purposes. I need to break it. Where's the scissors? Scissors. Oh, I have a scissor right here. Okay. Where are you running? Go Why are you running away? Okay, I won't use that as a demonstration. But if I take your hair and I break it down to little pieces of hair and I continue breaking it down until these really small particles that you can't even see, you will ultimately end up with little atoms. Are they big or small? Sm small, right? All right. Um, 
Let's continue talking. What is in an atom? What are the parts in an atom? We're going to talk about those. We have the nucleus. The nucleus would be the center of the atom. And that would be this part here. The nucleus. That is the center of the atom. Then we have electrons. Where are the electrons? Those are the outside, right? Anybody know what kind of charge they have? Negative. Negative. You guys are on point. Why am I even teaching this class? You guys should just be, know it and leave, right? Yeah, I agree. You agree? Okay, goodbye. For real? Why are you guys getting up? No, but that was a rhetorical statement. Is there such a thing as a rhetorical statement? <laughs> this is why I don't teach English. I stick with biology. Anyhow, electrons. Those are the outer particles. And what you need to know about electrons, they have a negative charge. What are the ones with a positive charge? What? Positive charge would be? Protons. We're going to get there. All right? Uh, protons, are, those are particles found in the nucleus. You can see them here. They're yellow in this picture. And they have a positive charge. And then we have the neutrons. Those are also, not Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> the, no, that's, I, I, oh. It was just as funny back then. <laughs> it was. I guarantee. Neutrons, they are found in a nucleus. And these are the orange ones that you see here. And neutrons have no charge. Now, these are pretty easy to remember for me. Uh, protons have a positive. P, protons. P, positive. Neutrons have no charge or neutral. They're neutral. They have no charge. You have N in neutrons, N for neutral, or N for no charge. And then you have electrons, and they have a negative charge. The E for negative charge. All right? So that's how I remember them. Um, I guarantee you won't forget that. All right? So protons have what charge? Positive. Positive. Neutrons have? No charge or neutrals, uh, neutral, and electrons have negative. an negative charge. <laughs> Just don't tell your parents that that's what I'm teaching you. They're positive and negative charges. They're, they'll think that I'm crazy. All right, uh, so here we have electrons, negative charge, protons, positive charge, neutrons, no charge. Very important to remember. Uh, the electron and proton numbers are always going to be the same. So if you have 10 protons, how many electrons do you have? You guys are geniuses. If you have 20 protons, how many electrons do you have? 20. 20. Yeah. You don't look as excited as I am. If you have 50, you don't get it? If you have 15 protons, how many electrons do you have? 15. If you have 6 protons, how many electrons do you have? Six. Don't let me trick you in any question. If you have 16, you have. Good job. You rock. Now we're going to talk about energy levels. Um, what is an element? Something that can't be broken down into any kind of Into smaller particles. What, are, what is an element? Smaller okay. particles. Something that cannot be broken down into smaller particles. If you break an element, if you take something and you break it down to its smallest particle, what do you have? An atom. One atom. What are the parts of an atom? Protons, protons neutrons, neutrons, electrons, electrons and the nucleus. What is in the nucleus? The protons. protons and the neutrons. Protons have what kind of a charge? Positive, Positive charge. Neutron, neutrons. <laughs> what are neutrons? Neutrons have what kind of a charge? No charge. No charge. Electrons have? Negative. Negative charge. Come on, get it right. No, I'm just joking. You're right. All right, so... Electrons have a negative charge, and now we're talking about energy levels. Energy levels. Electrons are around, the, they travel around the, the atom, and the outer, they're the outer particles, but they don't just travel randomly. Okay, they're in specific places. And the regions around the nucleus that the electrons travel, we call that the energy levels. Okay, so they're, 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 here you can see. We have a number of different atoms. We have these electrons that are outside, and they are traveling, but in specific places that we call energy levels. 
Okay? And the key thing about these energy levels is that atoms like to have the outermost energy level full. The outermost energy level full. Okay, and we're going to talk about how many electrons we can have in these different levels. Um, in the first energy level, we can have two electrons. And you can see here, hydrogen only has one electron. Um, helium has two electrons, and you can see it has two in that first one, and that is full. If you look down here at calcium, it only has two in the first energy level. Here, it only has two in the first energy level. Um, in the second energy level, it likes to have eight. It can have as, mu as much as eight. So here you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here you also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and then in the third energy level, we have 18 electrons. So the first, we have two. The second, we have eight. And the third energy level, we have 18. Excuse me? Uh, we're not going into all of that. I know, but I've, this is just to show you that regardless of how many energy levels you how many electrons you have, in the first one you're only going to have two. In the second one you can have a maximum of eight. In the third you can have a maximum of eighteen. Question. Uh huh. Are you talking about this one? Because this one only has one, two, three, four, five, six. So what it will do in the first energy, energy level, how many can fit? Two. So it'll put the first two in the first one, and then whatever remains will go in the second. There's a maximum number that it can have in the second, but whatever remains will go in the second. Let's now uh, continue with a different term, isotopes. What is an isotope? An isotope is atom, atoms that have the same, they're the same element, but they have a different number of neutrons. For example, here we have hydrogen, and this is a different form of hydrogen. But this hydrogen now has two neutrons. This one only has one neutron. These are different versions, I guess you can say, and we call those different versions of hydrogen isotopes. It's still hydrogen, it's still a form of hydrogen, but it's a different isotope. Um, so, for example, uh, most carbon nuclei, what is nuclei? More than one nucleus. Okay, more than one nucleus. Most carbon nuclei contains six neutrons. However, there are some that have seven or even eight neutrons. Uh, these, at these three atoms are different isotopes. They're different versions, and we call those different versions iso isotopes. Um, so we refer to the isotopes in terms of the combined total of protons and neutrons. Okay, so we're going to do some math here. It's going to be some really simple math. Um, so carbon-12, for example, has six protons and six neutrons. Um, how many protons and neutrons does carbon-13 and carbon-14 have? How many would carbon-13 have? <laughs> no. The number of protons are always going to be the same. So there's no such thing as hydrogen. Yes, there is. Okay. The fact that it's carbon means that we have six protons. Carbon-12 has 6 and 6. How, much would, how many would carbon-13 have? 6 and... Six. But then you went back and, and started talking about 6 and a half. All right, so it's 6 and... Oh, I'm sorry. I, please forgive me. Please forgive me. So carbon-13 always... Carbon always has 6 protons because it's carbon, but carbon-13 would have 6 protons and 7 neutrons. What about carbon-14? Six and eight. All right, so carbon 12, six and six, carbon 13, six and six. <laughs> that's the new biology dad. Because you identify the element by how many protons it has. Okay, so the car if it's carbon, you know it's always going to have six protons. What can change would be the number of neutrons. So if you have one extra, 
neutron, it will be carbon-13. If you have two extras, it will be carbon-14. All right, let's continue now with talking about compounds. We've, we've spoken about atoms. We've spoken about elements. Now, today, we're going to start by talking about compounds. A compound is a substance that is composed of two or more different elements that are chemically combined. Two or more different elements chemically combined. Take this off, please. That is a what you said? H2O. Are you sure? Yeah, because it's underneath what it is. That is correct. It is H2O on that screen. Good job. And it also looks like Mickey Mouse, doesn't it? I was just thinking about uh, Yeah, it looks kind of. Speedy Gonzalez. No, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see Speedy Gonzalez in that. I, I do see a, a, a Mickey Mouse. But anyhow, let's continue. Um, properties of compounds are different than those of their individual elements. So you take, what is Na? Sodium. Anybody know what Cl is? Chlorine. Um, but when you combine them together chemically, you get sodium chloride, and that is what? Table salt. Now... Do you know anything about sodium and, and chloride? Do you think you would want to eat pure sodium or pure, chlor pure chlorine? No. no. What would happen? Die. You would probably die. Do we like dying? No. no. Dying sometimes? When was the last time you enjoyed dying? <laughs> oh, I see. You know, th there's some logic to what you're saying. All right, so you don't want to eat sodium. You don't want to eat chlorine. But when you combine them chemically and you get sodium chloride, you have table salt. Do you want to eat that? Sometimes. Well, probably not pure table salt, but you combine it with some food and you can eat that, right? So the, the, when you combine them chemically, it can change the properties significantly. Um, compounds can always be described uh, using an equation. For example, H2O. What does H stand for? Hydrogen. Hydrogen. What does O stand for? Oxygen. So H2O, as we can see in this figure over here, has two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. All right. So we use these equations to describe the compounds that we are talking about. Now, we're going to talk about a number of different types of bonds. And the first type of bond we're going to talk about is a covalent bond. Bond number one, a covalent bond. And what is a covalent bond? Uh, when two elements share electrons in their outer energy level. Now, remember, we said that atoms are the happiest when their outer energy level is full. And they want to have the outer energy level full. An example, we're going to talk about water in a little while. But I need a volunteer. Who's my volunteer? Okay, I saw Gus's hand first. Please come and bring a pen. All right, you are hydrogen. Anybody remember how many? Okay, we do. Come, come ahead. Um, we have Calvin is going to be our lovely volunteer this morning. Thank you very much for volunteering. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? No. Are you afraid? No. You'll be fine. Okay, you're going to have to do something with me. Come. Don't look so uh, concerned. All right. You have a pencil? Okay, you have a pencil. Do you guys remember how many electrons hydrogen has? One, right? Okay. So hydrogen has one electron. You are hydrogen. Where's your one electron? Where's your one electron? Oh. Oh. <laughs> wow. You're a special guy, I tell you. Um, I have my one electron. Now, you guys remember, in the first energy level, how many electrons do we want to have? Two. Two. Am I happy? No. No, right? Because I have one. Is he happy? No. No, because he has one. I mean, he's normally, you can tell he's happy. But in terms of his electrons, he's not happy right now. So what are we going to do? How can we be happy? If I want two and he wants two, I only have one and he only has one. What can we do? So we're going to share. And this is what we're going to do right now. We're just going to share. There you go. <laughs> no, we're sharing. Okay. How many electrons do I have access to right now? Two. How many electrons does he have access to right now? 
too. Am I happier? I am happier. Is he happier? What is, it? what is this bond? Covalent bond. I have one electron. He has one electron. We want two, so we're going to share, and that's what we're doing right now. Does that make sense? Covalent bond. All right, thank you, sir. You can have a seat. You were very helpful. I appreciate it. Okay, let's continue now by looking at water. Water, we said, has what? Two atoms of hydrogen, hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. oxygen. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at how that molecule forms. Uh, I have a video here that I'm going to show. Let's watch that video. Sometimes atoms combine by sharing electrons to form covalent bonds. Hydrogen gas exists in nature as diatomic molecules. Two hydrogen atoms share electrons with each other. The electrons move around the nuclei of both atoms. When two hydrogens share electrons with oxygen, they form covalent bonds to produce a molecule of water. Each hydrogen atom shares one electron with the single oxygen atom. Yeah, so now, now look at this. Um, oxygen, oxygen has a total of eight electrons, normally. It has a total of eight electrons, normally. So it has how many in the first level? Zero. Two. And how many are going to remain for the second level? No. Six, right? OK, so we have six in the second level. How many does it want in the second level? Eight. It wants to have eight. So when it has the two hydrogens, and it's sharing the electrons with those two hydrogens, is it happy now? Yes. It is happy, because now it has eight electrons, um, and that makes it much happier. All right, let's continue. Uh, what is a molecule? What is a molecule? A molecule is a group of atoms that are held together by covalent bond, covalent bonds, and have no overall charge. So you combine them together, you join them by covalent bonds. They are sharing electrons, like Calvin and I was in a, a little while ago, and you saw in that video, and everybody is happy. Now we're going to go to the second type of bond, and that second type of bond is an ionic bond. And this is um, similar to what we spoke about in sodium chloride. Um, that is a bond between atoms that is formed by losing and gaining electrons. I need a volunteer. Okay. Will, I saw your hand first. Um, you're going to be the volunteer. You have one extra electron. Okay. Will has one extra electron. And I have, I'm short one electron. He has one more than he needs. I am missing one. One. Okay, so I have one less than I want. What would be the smart thing to do here? He's going to give me his electron. Sir, can I have your electron? Thank you very much. What type of charge do electrons have? Negative. Negative, Negative right? All right, so what is my charge now? Since I have an extra electron, my charge is? Negative. Negative. What is his charge since he gave away negative? Positive. Positive. What do you get when you have opposite charges? When you have opposite charges, what happens to those two objects? They are, what's the word? Attracted. <laughs> How you doing? All right, so I have one extra electron now. I have a negative charge, and he has a positive charge. We are attracted to each other. And what happens when things get attracted to each other? They Stay there. They come together. They come together. <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this question. <laughs> I'm going to ask I'm going to ask you this question. Which bond is a stronger bond, the covalent or the ionic? <laughs> the ionic. Why do you think that's the case? All right, so I, I have a feeling that it's going to be hard to get volunteers from here on out. But anyhow, so 
He had an extra. He gave it to me. Now I have a negative charge. He has a positive charge. All right, so opposites are going to attract, and you're going to form an ionic bond, which is significantly stronger than a covalent bond. So let's continue by talking about these ionic bonds. An example of an ionic bond would be NaCl. What is NaCl again? So sodium chloride, which is table salt. And that is, a, that is one of the symbols that I, I can ask you that equation on the test, even though it wasn't earlier on. Any equation you see on here is fair gain for the test. Um, sodium has one electron in its outer shell, so it has one more than it needs, really. Chloride has seven in its outer shell, and that's the second level. So it wants to have how many in the second level? Eight, Eight it wants to have. So what happens is uh, the, two are op the two become oppositely charged when sodium gives one up, and the atoms now attract each other like magnets. Are you guys ready for the video on this one? All right, let's watch that. A sodium atom contains 11 electrons, two in the first energy level, eight in the second, and one in the third. A chlorine atom has 17 electrons, with the outer level holding seven electrons. When sodium and chlorine combine, the sodium atom loses one electron and the chlorine atom gains it. Thus, the chlorine ion formed is stable with eight electrons in its outer level and has a negative charge. Sodium has lost the one electron that was in its third energy level. Thus, the sodium ion has a positive charge and is stable. Oh, yeah, that's it. Does that make sense? Okay, once again, it had, the sodium had one extra electron. It gave it away to the chloride. Um, the chloride now has a negative charge. The sodium now has a positive charge. And because they are oppositely charged, they attract each other and form an ionic bond. So you give away one, give away one electron. The chloride gets negative. The sodium gets positive, And because they are oppositely charged, they attract each other like magnets and you form that bond. All right, let's continue now by talking about chemical reactions. Uh, chemical reactions, that happens when bonds between compounds are broken and formed. So we're breaking some bonds, and we're forming some new bonds, and we're going to look at how that happens. Um, chemical reactions must have the right environment for them to happen. What do we mean by have the right environment? Well, they have to have the right pH. And we're going to talk about what pH is in a little while. You have to have the right temperature. Then you have to have the right amount of energy. And you also have to have the right concentration. So you want to have the right pH, temperature, energy, and concentration. If I tell you what are the factors that are um, going to contribute to chemical reactions happening. Um, these are the factors that I want you to tell me. Um, now, let's talk about the chemical equations that we get. Chemical equations, how do we set up chemical equations? You had to do this in your homework assignment, or you had to balance the chemical equation in your homework assignment. We're going to talk about that today. Um, you have a reactant that you combine with another reactant, and you form a product. All right, uh, reactants are the ones that undergo the chemical reactions. Uh, the products are formed in the chemical reactions. So the reactants go through the chemical reaction, and the products are formed in the chemical reaction. For example, we take hydrogen, and hydrogen is normally in the form of H2, two atoms of hydrogen, um, plus oxygen, which is O2, and we get water. Now. These different numbers, the first number here, the bigger number, that's talking about the number of molecules. The smaller number is talking about the number of atoms. So this is two atoms of hydrogen in this one molecule. But it's saying that we have two of those molecules that is going to combine with one molecule of oxygen to form how many molecules of water? Two. All right, so two molecules of hydrogen 
go with two molecules of oxygen, I mean one molecule of oxygen to form two molecules of water. Now it's very important that we have the same amount on the left and on the right. We have two of these and this has two in each so we have a total of how many atoms of hydrogen here? Four, correct. How many atoms of oxygen do we have here? Two. So on this side we also need to have how many at atoms of hydrogen? Four. And how many atoms of oxygen? Two. And that is what we have so that equation is balanced and we are good to go. So the key point here is at matter, matter or atoms are never created or destroyed. What we start with is what we're going to end with. They might be rearranged in a different way, but they can nev we can never add stuff here that we didn't start with. Now let's talk about metabolism. What do you think of when you hear the word metabolism? Your stomach? What about your stomach? If you have a good or a, f a fast or slow metabolism, what happens if you have a faster metabolism? You'll be skinny. <laughs> okay, it's easier to lose weight if your yeah. metabolism is faster, right? Um, and w but what exactly is metabolism? When we're talking about metabolism, we're talking about all of the chemical reactions that are happening in, in your body. You take in food, you need to break down that food, you need to build stuff up and all of that. All right, all those chemical reactions that are happening to break stuff down and to form uh, new chemicals, that is what we mean by metabolism. And some of these chemicals produce energy. Some of these chemicals require energy. Uh, but a key point is that it builds the necessary molecules for bodily functions. So the stuff that we need um, the functions that need to happen inside the body, um, the, these chemical reactions are producing those molecules. Now, let's talk about the difference between solutions and mixtures. There's a lot in this section. This is probably one of the longest sections that we've gone through uh, so far. A solution, if I take Kool-Aid, you know the Kool-Aid packets, and I put it in, oh, some of you guys look excited about Kool-Aid. Take that Kool-Aid, I put it in water, and I stir it up. What do I get? Kool-Aid, Kool right? I get juice, right? Um, and the, the, the crystals, do they still stay as crystals? No. no, they do what? They dissolve, okay? That is considered to be a solution. A solution is a mixture in which one or more substances are evenly distributed in water. And for example, if you take salt in water, you stir it up, it becomes a solution. If you add Kool-Aid to water, you stir it up, you have juice. And, and we drink it and we're all happy. That's a solution. Um, and what do, we talk, what do we mean by a mixture? A mixture is a combination of substances in which the individual components retain their chemical properties. All right, if I take sand, I put it in salt, I mix it up, what do I end up with? Sand and salt. Sand and salt. There's no like sweet drink that comes out of it or anything of that sort. It's still just sand and salt. You can, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? You take sand and salt and you just get some juice. That'd be, that'd be rocking. All right, so sand and salt would be an example of a mixture. What about sand and water, though? What do I have, a solution or a mixture? It's a mixture, right? You still have sand and you still have water. All right? So a solution is evenly distributed, a mixture, you still have the individual components. We said that the factors that influence the chemical reaction, what were they? pH, pH temperature, temperature um, concentration, concentration energy. energy. All right? We know what most of those are. Let's talk about pH. We're going to talk about that. And actually, I, ha I think I have some pH paper in the back here. I'm going to bring some out and we'll test the pH of a few different things. The pH is a measure of how <coughs> acidic or basic a substance is. We want to know if it's an acid or if it's a base or if it's in between and that's going to be neutral and we'll talk about that too. Okay, um, it's on a scale of 0 to 14 and on that scale we use we use pH paper to determine the pH level. That's one way you can do it. We also have some um, 
uh, machines that you can use to determine pH also. Uh, if the pH is below 7, it is an acid. If it's above 7, what is it going to be? It's going to be a base. So if it's above 7, it's basic. And if it's 7, it's going to be neutral. Um, and water has a pH of 7. So let's look at this. I have some pH paper here. Let me get some out. Okay, here's my pH paper. My pH paper is in this container. And if we can get it open. I don't think so. Oh, oh, yeah, to test the, the acidity or how basic it is. Yep. What is that? pH paper. We have pH paper and you can see if you look on the container of the pH paper, it has a scale um, pH 1, it turns red. Um, if it's 7, it's going to stay around the same color. Um, and if it's basic, it's going to turn blue. Okay, here we have a few things. And we want to see if it's acidic or basic. I'm going to have you guys guess before we do it, and then we're going to actually do it and see if you know what you're talking about. Let me get a little contain a few containers. Okay, here I have some pH paper, and I'm going to test. What do we want to test first? Glass remover. Yeah, you are going to guess. What do you think it is? Acidic, basic, or neutral? You think it's basic? Why do you think so? Wow. Okay, let's. If I can open it, there we go. This is to remove um, the glass off the paint, so when so you don't have to use sandpaper. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of glass remover here. And you guys said basic, right? Yep. Let's see if you know what you're talking about. Oh, you guys look so intense. Like, what is it gonna be? Okay, let's see here. Let's see what? What color is it? You tell me. Normal. We're going to take it and we're going to compare it. What do you think? What do you think? You don't know? What do you think? Acidic? Okay, it's, it, may, it may be a little bit on the acidic side, not really that strong because it's a pH of somewhere between 6 and 7. So it's almost neutral. Okay, what do you want to do next? Windex. Windex. We're going to do Windex. What do you think it's going to be? Neutral. Neutral? <laughs> okay, now everything is neutral, right? No, I think it's going to be neutral. Basic. Yeah. Why do you say basic? Because it's blue? <laughs> Bless you. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to test the Windex now and see what we get. Well, the Windex is blue, though. No, but that, it's not, this is, th that's not what's causing this to become blue. Okay? A napkin and dip it in there? Okay, let's do that. We, want, we just want to prove, because that, that's a good test, actually, to prove that it's not becoming blue because of the, the, the yeah. Windex. It's blue. <laughs> do you see a difference? Yeah. Okay, so I want you guys to tell me, what do you think the pH is? Basic. No, but what is the pH? Seven. What do you think? Eight. Oh, I know right. No. <laughs> okay. She's, she's saying that it's somewhere around 11. I would agree. That it's somewhere between 10 and 11. So, yeah, somewhere around there. Is that an acid or a base? Base. Okay, base. Okay, let me rinse this out to do the last one. Hopefully, we can get an acid here somewhere. Nope, it's vinegar. Oh, it's vinegar. What do you guys think about vinegar? Basic? Neutral? We need a lemon. That would be good. I thought I had some lemon here, lemon juice. Let's see what this vinegar guy is going to do for us. How many people think it's going to be acidic? How you guys just want it to be acidic, huh? 
How many people think it's going to be basic? <laughs> Neutral? How many people don't think? Oh, this is definitely... Well, let's, let's check our scale. What number would you give that? I can't believe I'm agreeing to your thoughts. Three? Okay. A pH of three. What is that? Ouch. It's ouch. <laughs> wow, that's pretty ouch. That's like the new type of acid, ouch. Okay, let's get, a, get rid of all this stuff now and get back to the lesson. So we know pH in terms of how to determine whether it's an acid or a base. But what's an acid and what's a base? One is acidic, so what does that mean? It burns, actually. Um, depending on the strength of the acid, it could seriously burn. At home, our yard, our yard has white tiles instead of dirt. Don't ask me why. But we have white tiles all around. And every once in a while, it gets really dirty because it's white, white tiles and it's outside. So when, when it gets really dirty, what we do is we take some acid and we pour it on the ground. And you have to cover your nose so that you're not inhaling the fuse. And it just, it really just, it almost seems as if it's burning the ground, burning the dirt off the ground. It has the chemical reactions. And then you just pour some water and it's white again, white as snow. So it really makes a big difference. What if you walk on it? Uh huh. And what happened to the paintbrush? And he wipes it on this girl's arm because she was like doing torches. Uh huh. And, like wipes it across her face. And her uh -huh. face like melted away. Yep. Yeah. Acid. Oh. If you have a really, if you have a really strong acid, that can really do some serious oh, yeah. damage. But let's talk about um, and there's stuff like sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. But let's talk about what an acid is. An acid um, is any substance that when you put it in water, it forms hydrogen ions. Okay, and what are what's the symbol for hydrogen ion? Um, H plus. What type of charge do you think that has? Positive. Positive charge, right? H plus. You put it in water, and you form hydrogen ions. It's an acid. Um, for example, uh, and this is, a, this is another equation that you need to know, and you want to write this in. HCl, that is hydrochloric acid. H-Y-D-R-O, C-H-L... O-R-I-C, acid. H-C-L is hydrochloric acid. So that is what an acid is. You put it in water and you form hydrogen ions, and the hydrogen ions are, are what makes that pH paper turn what color? Acid. Color, red, all right? It, it, be, it gets less yellow and more red. Um, let's talk about what a base is. A base is any substance that when you put it in water, it forms not hydrogen ions, but hydroxide ions. And the symbol for hydroxide is OH minus. OH negative. Correct. Hydroxide. Hydroxide ion. It's a, it's a particular ion in water, and that ion is responsible, in this case, for turning this, what color? Blue. Blue. What is that white stuff on that flag? That is, uh, that is, like I think that's sodium hydroxide. Ooh. Okay, uh, when NaOH, what's Na again? Sodium, and what's OH? Neg OH negative is what? Hydroxide. So when you put them together, you have sodium hydroxide. That's another um, equation that you need to know, and it can potentially come up on the test. Hint, hint, hint. So sodium. sodium hydroxide, NaOH. When you put that in water, you get sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Sodium ions and hydroxide ions. All right, let's talk about some common acids and bases. First, we're going to talk about acids. Um, some of the common ones that you'd probably know, orange juice. Orange juice, that is what kind of acid? Citric, Citric acid it has in it, so that's going to be acidic. <laughs> and then, of course, in your stomach, you have some stomach acids. Um, and what do, the, what do the stomach acids help do? 
digest your food. We're going to talk about that when we talk about the digestive system. And then you have tomato juice that is also <coughs> acidic. And then we have some common bases. Um, an example would be toothpaste. That's a base. Um, baking powder. That's basic. And chlorine bleach that you use when you're um, washing your clothes or cleaning your house. Um, that is also a common base. So in review, we are to the end of this section. In review, uh, we've, we've answered the question, what is an element? What is it? Anything that cannot break down. Cannot be broken, broken down into smaller, particles. Small, smaller particles. We spoke about an atom. What is an atom? Any, the, the, the smallest particle of any broken down element. The smallest, par smallest particle of any broken down element that still is that element. Okay, and then we spoke about the th we spoke about wait did we speak about three types of chemical bonds? No, we spoke about two so far. We're gonna speak about one more next time. What were the two that we spoke about today? Covalent bond and ionic bonds. Which one is sharing electrons? Covalent, that was us, right? We were sharing the electron. And then the ionic bond is giving an electron up. One becomes negative, the other one becomes positive, and they attract each other. And then we spoke about chemical reactions. That is the end of section 6.1.